Unboxing Oath of the Gatewatch. Retake the world. So. Here's the box here. Bit like that. First pack. Let's see what it is. It's a matter reshaper. Oh yeah. Those are my my personal favorite. Matter reshaper is one waste two colorless Eldrazi creature that says when matter reshaper dies, reveal the top card of your library. You may put that card into the battlefield if that if it's a permanent card with converted mana cost three or less. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go over the uh, the commons. I'll pull out any uh, hot foils or noteworthy uncommons out as well. So that is Battery Shaper. So that's our first one. Back to fight. Mana Barbs. Mana Barber. All right, pack two. Deceiver. Of form. Deceiver of form says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card revealed this way, you may have creatures you control other than Deceiver of form become copies of that card until end of turn. You may put that card on the bottom of your library. That is one way six colorless Eldrazi 8 8. That's pretty weird. Oh boy. Okay. Pack three. We go. Let's open here. Numero tres. Stonehaven Outfitter. Oh, baby. That guy says one white, one colorless. Equipped creature you control gets plus one, plus one. Uh, or equipped creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever an equipped creature you control dies, then draw a card. So yeah, that's pretty good. Drawing cards is good. We always like drawing cards. Back number four. <laughs> and world breaker. There we go. That's a good card. World Breaker. That's the first noteworthy card we got. So I might have to uh, to make a, a text box here. Let's see. Properties. Heart cards opened so far. World Breaker. Okay. I think that uh, everybody should know that we opened World Breaker. So I'll get this scrolling across the top. And there we go. Put it at 10. 10 is readable. Okay. Whew. World Breaker is pretty nice. I like World Breaker. Okay, so we'll, if you don't know what World Breaker is, it's one green, six colorless Eldrazi creature. 5-7, Devoid. It has no color. When you cast World Breaker, exile target artifact, enchantment, or land. Then it also has reach, and you can pay a waste and two colorless and sack a land, and return it, return World Breaker from your graveyard to your hand. Holy shit. So it's kind of like an acidic slime on crack. It's insane. Okay, let's go to the next pack here. That was pretty good there. Pretty good. Okay. Next rare. Oh, there's something noteworthy. Foil planes. We'll put that down with the rares. That's pretty hot. Foil planes. Might have to write that one down. And bearer of silence, the rare in this pack. Okay, bearer of silence says one black and one colorless devoid is a two one. 
and when you cast Bearer of Silence, you may pay a waste and a colorless and a generic, um, a colorless and a generic, a waste and a generic. If you do, target opponent sacrifices a creature. That's pretty good. I like that guy. That's quite quite clever. Okay. Here's a little bit more. The old rare. Oh, we got a foil. We got a foil. Immobilizer Eldrazi. Hmm. Well, it could have been better. That is just a uncommon for a red and a colorless. Devoid. Um, you can pay a waste and two colorless, and each creature with power and toughness greater than its power can't block this turn. So that means it can't block anything. Okay, and the rare? Ooh, it's actually a mythic. Crush of Tentacles. Crush of Tentacles is a sorcery for two blue and four colorless that... Uh, I don't even know what it does. It has Surge. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. If Crush of the Tentacles Surge cost was paid, put an 8-8 blue octopus creature token onto the battlefield as well. Hmm. That's crazy. Other than Wasteland, are there any cards in this set that seem good in Modern or Legacy? Uh, Ancient Tomb? Seems pretty good. Anyways, Crush Tentacles. It's I. Let's open another pack here, shall we? Shall we? Shall we do this? Sorry, I'm bending things here. Gotta bend it like Beckham. Um, oh, I didn't realize the camera went all the way over here. Okay. Well, that might be a little bit better. Just like that. Alright, whatever. Puzzle X Return could be replacing Pyroclasm in the Green Red Tron, maybe? I don't know. Probably not. Anyways, next rare. Let's get to it. Oh, it's a foil! Oh my god. Oblivion Strike. It's one black and three colorless sorcery. Devoid exile target creature. Wow. And then we have a Glade Heart Cavalry. I've been told this guy is an elf knight for two green and five colorless. And uh, when he enters the battlefield, support six. Support means put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to six other target creatures. Now, whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it dies, you may gain two life. So that guy is quite a beast. Quite a beast indeed. All right, you guys ready? We're like uh, almost a third of the way through this box. We gotta hype it up in here a little bit. Hype it up! Because this pack is a wasteland. Totally a wasteland. Right here, I'm calling it. It is a foil. Jory N. Ruin Diver, a foil. That is to say, EDH General. Yeah, legendary creature Merfolk Wizard for a red, a blue, and a colorless. He's a 2-3. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card? Dude, what? Okay, that guy's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say he could become a, a pretty good uh, EDH general. I don't know if putting that foil up there is technically a hot card. All right, I guess, is it hot? I don't know. You guys decide. Is it hot or is it not? If it's hot enough to go next to World Breaker, you tell me. I don't know. All right, next rare. Guess what? When it rains, it pours. Another Jory and Ruin Diver. This one, however, is not foil. Oh, well. But we did actually get a Storm Chaser Mage. It's a little off-center. Wow, it's really off-center, actually. Um, yeah, that's pretty off-center. I don't know if you guys can tell from there, but, uh, whew, okay. 
So we got two jury in ruin guys. That was fun. Uh, we did also get a foil plane. So we got the foil ruin diver and the foil planes. Are are they hot or not? I don't know. How about a Aili Eternal Pilgrim? That's a core cleric legendary creature. If you like black white or uh, what are they called again? Orzov. If you like Orzov, this could be your card. Uh, it has Death Touch built in, and it's a 2-3 for 2. Wow. Actually seems pretty good. Sacrifice another creature. You gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Now, you pay a generic mana to do that. And sacrifice another creature for a black, white, and a colorless. Exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 or more life. Oh, 10 more life than your starting life total. Oh, so you have to be at 30 life. Uh, yeah. Check the pack for a foil rare. I did. I, I usually do that. Okay. On to the next. On to the next. Double rare. General Tazri. Thanks for the follow, Million. General Tazri says When General Tazri enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an ally creature card and reveal it and put it into your hand and then shuffle your library. If you pay one of each color, that is white, blue, black, red, and green. Ally creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of colors among those creatures. Hmm. And he's a 3-4 for 5. Yeah. He's a creature. He's an ally. I don't know about Mythic, though. Does, does that make sense why he's Mythic? What are you talking about? I have a rare in the pack. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I have a wastes. You're saying I put a rare into this pile? A rare or a foil? Wait, 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 wait. You need that guy as your general? The, the Eldrazi dude? I don't think I put a rare in here. You guys are scaring me now. You're saying I put a, a, oh, I did. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You're right, I did, okay. <laughs> You're right, you guys caught me. Thanks, see, that's why you guys are here. I wouldn't even know. It would just be a, a rare. Okay, so the rare I put in the junk pile. Are you ready? Are you ready for the secret junk pile rare that I tried to stow away for a rainy day? It's coming out. Okay, it's a Eldrazi obligator. Uh, one red and two colorless, three one devoid creature that is an Eldrazi. And when you cast Eldrazi Obligator, you may pay one generic and one waste. And if you do, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. And he has haste. What? So he's got built-in act of treason kind of kind of stuff going on. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty cool. Not bad, huh? That guy in Limited must be pretty disgusting. <laughs> okay, here's the next one. Got a Wandering Fumarole. First man land we've opened. Uh, that's the blue-red one. They all enter the battlefield tapped and then produce two colors. This one clearly is the is it colors, blue and red. Uh, and when you pay a blue, a red, and two generic mana, until the end of turn... Uh, it, Wandering Fumarole becomes a 1-4 blue and red elemental creature with pay zero, switch this creature's power and toughness until end of turn. It's still land. So, pretty ridiculous, actually. Because what you can do is attack if they go, okay, no, no blocks, no effects, and you go, okay, cool, I'll pay zero, switch the power and toughness, 
And uh, then they go, okay, cool. Once that ability resolves, now I'll fiery impulse him now that he's a 4 1. And you go, cool. I'll pay zero again, make him back into a 1 4. That resolves. Then fiery impulse resolves. Ah, he's hard to kill. But you couldn't switch it back because he would still have the damage on him. But that's a pretty cool card. Here's a pretty cool card, a noteworthy one. I just uh, saw him in the uncommons pile here. Baloth Null. That is a double gravedigger built in for a 4 5 with a green, a black, and four colorless. Now, this guy's an uncommon, but I just wanted to say how powerful it was. I had it in my sealed pool at the midnight pre release, and it was just ridiculous. So, you get a 4 5 body for six already, but then you return two creature cards to your hand when it enters the battlefield. So, that's pretty powerful. <clears throat> That's not how it works. You pay zero, though. So, okay. So, say they fiery impulse it, and then you switch it back. It doesn't say you can only do it once or twice. So, if they impulsed it as a 4-1, and then you switched it, it would become a 1-4, and then impulse would resolve, and then it would live. At some point, it's a 4-1? No, that's... No, I'm, I'm saying you wouldn't change it back again. Because, yeah, it's the damage stacks on it. I understand that. All right, let's go to the next one. No, the damage is on the creature, though. Like, it has damage on it till the end of turn. So damage kind of does stack. Okay. Captain's Claws, oh baby, that's two colorless artifact equipment, and uh, equipped creature has plus one plus zero. The cost to equip is one generic. Now, when equipped creature attacks, put a 1-1 one, one white core ally creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Woo, ally triggers galore, huh? Triggering those allies. Got a Grasp of Darkness. That's uh, that's a pretty interesting reprint. Uh, the minus four, minus four. Uh, although it was a common before, and now it has become a uncommon. So, I guess they thought it was a little bit better. Grasp of Darkness. Yeah, this card seems great and limited. Seems insane, actually. Captain's Claws. <laughs> Get those ally triggers, son. Yeah, that's too many ally triggers. Can you get a full art lands from this set? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can get full art wastes too. I've only opened one waste so far, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, then. Survey says Oath of Chandra. Now, those, there's a series of these. There's one in every color. Uh, this one is the Chandra one. So, what this one does, they're all legendary enchantments. This one costs a red and a colorless. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target creature and opponent controls. Okay, so it's basically Fiery Impulse at its best. Uh, at sorcery speed, of course, because it's an enchantment. And uh, at the beginning of each end step, if a Planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control this turn, Oath of Chandra deals two damage to each opponent. So that's the bonus there. Wait, there's no Black Oath? Oh, shit. Because there's no Black Planeswalker? Well, there's Obnix. Hmm. Obnix got screwed, huh? I think I saw Mark Rosewater posting something about that. How Obnix was, was pissed because he got screwed on the Oath. He doesn't have an Oath. Is it Oath of Liliana? Yeah. Right? Uh, I don't know. Here's a Dread Defiler, just in case you were wondering what my next rare was. Uh, that guy is a black and six colorless Eldrazi creature, has Devoid, and he's a 6-8. These asses just keep getting bigger. And he has uh, three colorless and a waste, or three generic and a waste. And XL a creature card from the top of your graveyard. Wait, XL a creature card from your graveyard, okay. Just from your graveyard. Target opponent loses life equal to the XL card's power. Hmm. 
and you don't have to tap it to do that you can just pay that's pretty ridiculous in limited that is probably a huge bomb probably 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 Bob Nix is the best villain in a while the top cam is uh, out of focus okay Let's see what we can do does that help no there that's better I think that's better okay next pack is that better all right next pack Eldrazi Displacer. Wasn't that the first rare we opened? I believe it was. Uh, Eldrazi Displacer is a white and two colorless Eldrazi creature. That's a 3-3. Three, three. So a 3-3 three, three for 3, already pretty good. He's devoid, which means he has no color, even though he costs a white. Then you can pay a waste and two generic and exile another target creature. Then it returns to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So it has a, a momentary blink effect built into it, so to speak. Seems pretty good. Could be some combos going on there. Uh, bouncing like your Venser Shaper Savant or something. <clears throat> Seems to be focused now. All right, next one. Overwhelming Denial. That is the new counterspell with Surge. Costs two blue and two colorless. And it says, Overwhelming Denial can't be countered by spells or abilities. Counter target spell. So it's an uncounterable counter spell, similar to the flavor of last word, I suppose. Although, if it's the second spell cast this turn by you or a teammate, you can pay two blue. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. Alrighty then. On to the next. Guys, this camera is a rig tied to my ceiling by a ribbon on a cup hook with an umbrella uh, on, the, on the monitor as a counterweight. So, I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> Here's the next rare. Another overwhelming denial. When it rains, it pours. Wow, two of those in a row, huh? Well, how about that? What is this Void Shatter card? Counter target spell of that spells countered this way. Exile it instead of putting it to his owner's graveyard. Oh, wow. And this is colorless. Ooh, I like this Void Shatter card. I didn't know that was around. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty high tech. Well, I wanted to do an unboxing, and it's there was a snowstorm here, so I haven't got a chance to like go shopping. Plus, webcams are kind of expensive. What I really need is a tripod set up, so I think I'm just gonna get a tripod for my i for my uh, iPhone, and then use this same software and just just do that again. Okay, next rare. Oh, Goblin Dark Dwellers. That's uh. Pretty good card, I think. Two red and three colorless goblin. That's a 4-4. And when it enters the battlefield, you may uh, cast an instant or sorcery card with CMC three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. It gets exiled. That card is pretty good. I like that one. Yeah, Snowmageddon got us. I don't know if anybody was here for the Friday broadcast, but it was in the middle of that broadcast when we were comboing off in a tournament about to win and uh then the power went out so i lost electricity for three hours and uh end of story i lost the tournament as well <laughs> lost all my viewers okay next pack here here we go you got more ice in raleigh carry area yeah my brother lives out there he said the same thing yeah, we got like 10 or 12 inches here in Asheville. It was crazy. Next rare. Survey says Eldrazi Mimic. Two colorless 2-1 two Eldrazi that says whenever another colorless creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may change Eldrazi Mimic's base power and toughness to that creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Wait a second. What? 
Oh, I just hit the camera with my hat. Sorry, guys. Um, so, whenever another colorless creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may change Eldrazi Mimic's base power and toughness to that creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Oh, yeah. That guy seems pretty good. Got another Void Shatter here. All right. This is starting to be played in standard. The uh, Eldrazi Mimic? Really? Seems pretty good. All right, next pack. Give me the hot tamales, baby. What the? Mina and Den Wildborn. That is a legendary elf ally creature. And uh, it costs a green, a red, and two colorless. And uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Each of your turns. I think they're assuming we're going to be taking extra turns with this card. Does this seem like that's what they're assuming? You may play an additional land card on each of your turns. I think they're insinuating something here. It's a little... Uh, hidden strategy built into that one it says play play the card that takes extra turns do it uh hey retrograder what's up i did not open an expedition we still have packs left though it could still happen anyways uh we got a world breaker and what else did we get we got some other hot cards eldrazi mimic semi hot goblin dark dweller semi hot um, Wandering Fumarole, semi-hot. Uh, oh, the Jory N. Ruin Diver foil is pretty hot. I like that one. And the foil planes was pretty hot, too. So, yeah, we got some hot stuff. Here's the Jory N. Ruin Diver. I don't know what that, that goes for, but we got a foil one. That's pretty cool. Mina's great for Commander. Oh, I didn't read the second part of Mina. Sorry, I was in the middle of it, and then I got distracted. The second part of Mina says, pay a red and a green, okay, and then return a land you control to its owner's hand. So, you. And uh, target creature gains trample until end of turn. That's pretty good. All right, next pack. The moment you've all been waiting for. Whatever this rare is is the moment you've all been waiting for. Ready? Oath of Jace! That's what you guys were all here for, to see this Jace guy. Uh, one blue, two colorless Oath, which is a legendary enchantment. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards, then discard two cards. So a little bit of a sorcery-ish, thirst for knowledge-ish kind of effect, if you will. And uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, scry X, where X is the number of planeswalkers you control. So if you have zero planeswalkers, unfortunately, you're going to be scrying zero. But if you had one, that would be pretty amazing. All right. Retriggering landfall with the ne Nina, whatever her name was. Nina. Nina, Mina. Next pack. Survey says. Oh, that's hot. That is hot. Thought not seer, boys. Hype it up! We got a playable card. We got a playable card. We got a playable card. That's the playable card dance. Okay, so I'll add that to the, the list. World Breaker and Thought Not Seer. Okay. So that's two. Two hot cards, technically, I think. World Breaker and uh, and Thought Not Seer. Yeah, those are probably the most playable cards we've opened so far. Let's keep going. I don't think it's a better version of Vendillion Click Retrograder because it still can only be cast at sorcery speed, whereas Vendillion Click has Flash. So, But the effect that it gives you is better than Vendillion Click because it takes the card away and then doesn't give it back until later, which is great. It's great. Okay, on to the next. Ooh, I got, I got a little uh, 
flutter in my in my heart there for a second because I saw a foil land, but uh, it is only this foil forest, but that's still pretty hot. Foil forest, I'll take it. Okay, what else do we have here? The rare is a call to the gate watch. Search your library for a planeswalker card, reveal it, and put that into your hand. Then shuffle your library. So yeah, pretty much like an idyllic tutor for planeswalkers, but they go directly into your hand. That's pretty good. Sorcery speed, so that, uh, that's actually not that bad. Tutor a planeswalker in standard. Oh yeah, you can also click yourself. Right. And yeah, you can't you can't thought not see her yourself. Okay, next card. Dimension Infiltrator. Oh my goodness. It's a blue and a colorless Eldrazi creature that's a 2-1 devoid. This one does have the F word printed on him twice, in fact. Flash flying. Speaking of Vendillion Click, those are also two words Vendillion Click has printed on them that Thought Not Seer does not. Flash and flying. Two F words. Two F words. Now, this guy also has another ability. Target opponent exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a land card, you may return Dimensional Infiltrator to its owner's hand. Okay, and that costs a waste and a generic. That is a strange ability indeed. But he is flash flying, and uh, that's what I like about that one. Yeah, click is also double blue. That's one of the drawbacks of click, yeah. On to the next package of magic cards. Guys, if you're just joining the channel, we are clearly unboxing a Oath of the Gatewatch booster box here. Thanks, everybody, for joining. My name's Paul. If this is the first time here, don't forget to follow the channel and become a friend. Now, what do we have? We have a friend, a man land, Hissing Quagmire. That is a black and a green come into play tapped guild gate, essentially, that becomes better than a guild gate when you pay a black, a green, and a colorless and make him a 2 2 black and green elemental creature with death touch. That guy's actually pretty good. I had him in the, uh, the pre release and. Uh, I think one of the benefits is that it activates for three. Some of the other lands, they cost four to activate. For me, that's just too much. I'm not going to pay more than three to activate a land. I mean, I'm a blue-white player, and I don't even play Celestial Colonnade, because I don't want to tap all my mana like that. Okay, we're down to seven packs, guys. Let's go. We still got chances to crack a... To crack a Caracas... No, I don't think they printed that. But Strip Mine or Wasteland would be nice. Let's see what we got. Cultivator Drone Foil. That is a common Devoid. He makes waste mana. Spend this only to cast colorless spells. Or activate an ability of a colorless permanent. Or pay a cost that contains wastes. And another Man Land. When it rains, it's... It pours. Needle Spires. That is one that becomes a 2-1 red-white elemental creature with double strike until end of turn. Double strike's pretty good, so I understand why they made it cost two generic mana, uh, a red and a white. So, yeah. That one's pretty good. But, I don't know. It costs four to activate, so how good is that? I don't know. Next pack. Down to... Oh. Never mind. We have nine left. I miscounted. We still got nine left. So this is the last third. We're into the last third. We need some hype. We need to raise the roof. Okay. What is this one? Survey says Endbringer. Hmm. For a waste and five colorless, well, you get a five five. And it's an Eldrazi. And uh you untap Endbringer during each other player's and untap step. Now, he also has built in tap him and do a damage to target creature or player. Is this the Eldrazi Tim we've been waiting for? Prodigal Sorcerer has returned? Tim. Oh my goodness, Tim got better. Now we can all play Tim again. And then, 
pay two waste and draw a card with a tap. Or pay a waste and target creature can't attack or block this turn. What? This guy's insane! Well, I can't wait to play against this guy in limited and, and my opponent has one. Yeah, that seems like a good time. Just kidding. He's being facetious. Down to the last third. Here we go. Should we kiss it? Kiss it. That might help. This is the one we kissed. Survey says. Vile Redeemer. Hmm. For a green and two colorless, you get an Eldrazi that's a 3 3 with flash and devoid. And whenever you cast it, you may pay a waste. If you do, put a 1 1 colorless Eldrazi Scion onto the battlefield for each non token creature that died under your control this turn. Those tokens have sacrificed this creature, add a waste to your mana pool. Wow. That guy seems pretty good. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say that guy's good. Okay. All right, we're going to kiss it again since people are getting grossed out. Nope, we'll kiss the front of it this time. Right. We kissed the back last time. This time we're kissing it in the front. Ready? Kissing it in the front. Does wonders! Just kidding. It's a Hedron alignment. Uh, blue and two colorless enchantment. This enchantment has built in hex proof for some reason. Uh, you can pay a blue and a generic and scry one. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal your hand. If you do, you win the game if you own a card named Hedron alignment in exile in your hand, in your graveyard and on the battlefield that's weird that's weird that's just a weird card sounds like somebody wants to play like a another helix pinnacle deck to me helix pinnacle <laughs> this is for all you helix pinnacle players out there there we go Keep it going. This time, this time I'm gonna rub it like a genie. See if that helps. Rub it like a genie. All right. The kisses weren't working. Rub this one like a genie. And Sifter of Skulls came out. That is one black, three colorless Eldrazi creature with Devoid. He's four three, and whenever a non-token creature you control dies. Put a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature. Add a waste to your mana pool. So. That seems pretty good and limited. I don't see it having standard applications, but who knows? I could be wrong. Seems like colorless is pretty good. All right, next pack. Let's keep it going. Keep it rolling along. This one, Prophet of Distortion Foil. That's a one blue mana Eldrazi drone with Devoid that's a one two and has pay a waste and three generic draw card. That's not the worst. And then we got Ruins of Orin Reef. Enters the battlefield tapped. It is a rare land that enters the battlefield tapped and adds a waste to your mana pool or can also be tapped to put a plus one plus one counter on target colorless creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Not quite as good as the other Orin Reef, which I believe did it to all creatures that entered the battlefield. Or all green creatures that entered the battlefield. Something to that accord. It was similar. We can't always look it up. Coalition victory. We're still waiting on that to happen. Okay. Down to four packs, guys. This time I'm not going to do anything. Maybe they like being ignored. Survey says... 
Fall of the Titans. That is one red XX. Reminiscent of a fireball. But it is an instant with Surge. And it deals X damage to each of up to two target creatures and or players. X damage to each of up to two target creatures and or players with Surge making it way cheaper. Holy crap, if you can Surge that one, okay. So this is the, the bomb. The bomb of all bombs in Two-Headed Giant, I would say. Uh, the good stuff we opened is going across the top of the screen in the text, if you guys want to check that out. Okay. Next pack. Down to three packs. It's the beginning of the end. Survey says... Munda's Vanguard. This is a core knight ally for a white and four colorless. Has cohort. It's a core knight ally. Tap it. Tap it and an untapped ally you control to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Seems pretty good for limited. I still have only opened one storm chaser mage. Oh well. Oh, I just put a pile of commons in the rare pile. You guys not see that? Guys. Put a pile of commons. Okay. There we go. Make sure here. Oh, there are some wastes mixed in here. Yeah, the wastes are in a common slot, guys. If you didn't know that already, some people were saying that they were going to be the basic land slot. But no, the wastes are in a common slot. So it's a full art waste. Kind of weird. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, we've only opened one Storm Chaser. It's kind of weird. Okay. Last two packs, guys. Last two. How was this one? Expedite Foil. Oh, boy. And another Zendikar Resurgent. No, wait. We didn't open that before. It was something else that cost seven mana and was green. It was a creature. Okay, this time for seven mana. Two green, five colorless. We got an enchantment. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Holy shit! Built-in glimpse? That seems gross in EDH. Ugh. That is disgusting in EDH. Holy shit. Okay, last pack, guys. <laughs> then we're going to play some more modern. All right, last one. Fat packs have 10 full art wastes. No, that card's good in EDH. Come on, guys. It's mana reflection and glimpse, the un uh, glimpse uh, of nature every turn. It's stupid. It's stupid. Last card is a... Oh! At least we ended on a pretty good note here. We ended on a Kozilex Return. Probably the the next card we get to add to the, uh, the hyped cards we opened. Okay, I'll read it in just a second. That's pretty good, guys. Glad we got one of those. Okay, Kozilex Return, Worldbreaker, and Thought Knots here. The three best cards we opened. Uh, we also got two foil full art basics those are pretty good anyways if you don't know what Kozilek's return does I will read it to you Kozilek's return oh I know what I should have been doing the whole time I should have been putting them on a big stack of commons to raise it up closer to the uh, to the camera see is that better do you have a better view when I stack them like this yeah maybe it doesn't really make much difference, does it? Anyways, this is an instant for a red and two colorless. Uh, it has Devoid, so. Burrington Forge Tender? You're SOL. <laughs> uh, Core Firewalker, SOL as well. Circle of Protection Red. Get that out of here. Um, although that only does it to players. Anyways, what I'm saying is, Kozilek's Return is a Pyroclasm. And... If you cast an Eldrazi creature spell with converted mana cost 7 or greater, you can exile Kozilek's Return from your graveyard. 
If you do, Kozilek's Return deals 5 damage to each creature. You don't even have to pay any mana to do it. Wow. Wow. Okay, so we ended on a good note. Those are the, the three cards we got. So now we'll go back to playing uh, Ad Nauseam. Thanks, everybody, for watching the unboxing. We're going to make a YouTube video out of it, so I hope you behaved yourselves in the chat. Oh, wait. I didn't have chat on the screen. Hmm. Wonder why I did that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all are great. All right, so back to playing more Ad Nauseam now.